The universe is a vast canvas that accommodates billions upon billions of stars, many of which have their own planets. And as mankind develops more powerful tools for space exploration, the number just keeps growing. These planets rotate and spin, many of them orbiting their own stars with moons to keep them company. And yet, despite the tireless efforts of scientists and marvelous advances in technology, only one planet is known to have life, Earth. What makes this little blue orb of ours so special? Let's find out on today's episode of Creation Connection. I didn't like this. Let's find out on today's episode of Creation Connection. That was it. You nailed it. You like that? Wait, what's with the lasers? <laughs> <laughs> Keep it going, that's great. Before we begin, here's your friendly reminder to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. All right, let's go. It's beautiful, isn't it? This celestial body we call home. It hurtles around our sun at a brisk 67,000 miles an hour, orbiting at a distance of approximately 93 million miles. For reference, the Earth moves about 30 times faster than our fastest aircraft. On your left, Captain. And it would take that same aircraft more than five years of traveling at top speed to reach the sun. It's a little hot in here. Scientists call the Earth a Goldilocks planet because the conditions here are just right for life. Why is Earth the perfect home for humanity and the host of creatures that dwell here? Many scientists will say that the conditions for life occurred by chance over long periods of time. But if you take a closer look, our planet seems to be a piece of finely crafted astronomical art. Earth orbits the sun in what is called the habitable or Goldilocks zone, which means that our home is the perfect distance away from our primary source of heat and light. If Earth was much closer to the sun, the heat would make life unsustainable. Alternatively, if the planet were further away, it would become an unlivable frozen wasteland. The Earth's position within the habitable zone is also important for maintaining one of its most precious resources. More importantly, there would be no swimming pools. If the planet were moved closer to the sun, the water would boil away. And if it were moved further from the sun, Earth's water would Earth's size and speed help maintain its orbit, keeping it safely inside the Goldilocks zone. If it moved more quickly, or more slowly, the orbit would change, leading to destruction on a global scale. It seems that our planet's position in the solar system is just right. What are the odds that something like that happens by accident? There are none. While the Earth orbits the sun, it also spins on its axis. Since perception of direction can get kind of wonky in space, it's easy to think that the Earth's axis goes straight up and down. But it's actually tilted at approximately 23 and a half degrees. This may seem like an arbitrary number, but the tilt of Earth's axis is actually quite important. For six months out of the year, the northern hemisphere is tilted toward the sun, while during the other six months, it's the southern hemisphere's turn. This allows Earth to experience the four seasons in the way that it does. The four seasons are crucial to the life we live. The year-long cycle of spring, summer, fall, and winter heavily influences vegetation and plant growth, which in turn provides food for animals and people alike. Wow. Different locations experience seasons differently. Those living closer to the poles experience greater contrast between summer and winter, while those near the equator have little variation. 
Earth's axis was tilted much more than 23 and a half degrees, summers would be much warmer, which would lead to extensive flooding due to ice at the poles melting. Winters, on the other hand, would be brutally cold. Many of Earth's inhabited areas would also experience uninterrupted daylight during summer and darkness during winter, disrupting daily routines for many. But if Earth's axis were nearly vertical, there would be no seasons at all. Without the heat of summer, ice and snow would continually build at high latitudes, likely resulting in an ice age. Suddenly, summer vacations seem a lot less enticing. Surely it's not just a coincidence that our world is tilted at an angle that allows life to not just survive, but thrive. Earth's closest celestial neighbor is a dull gray chunk of rock little more than 2,000 miles across. This lifeless satellite orbits our world at a distance of nearly 239,000 miles and has evoked wonder throughout history. So much so that humans decided to visit it, making it the only other celestial body that we've set foot on. But what is its purpose? Is it more than just a glorified nightlight? Dr. Jake Hebert can tell us more. According to scripture, God made the heavenly bodies to serve uh, for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And of course, one of those heavenly bodies is the moon. And so it serves as a timekeeper. The phases of the moon, that gives us our, our monthly lunar cycle. You know, the moon is very hard for mainstream astronomical theorists to explain. Even though the conventional wisdom is, is that the moon formed from this a collision of the Earth with a Mars-sized body, there's a lot of problems with that idea. The Moon is pretty important. It's primarily responsible for our daily tides, which help to circulate ocean water to keep it from being stagnant. The Moon basically governs important biological cycles. You know, it's very interesting the, where the Moon is placed. You know, the Moon is 400 times smaller than the Sun, but it's also 400 times closer and because of that, you know, when the moon passes in front of the sun, you know, we get these beautiful, perfect solar eclipses that you don't get anywhere else in the solar system. We think that's a design feature. So the moon's important, it's, it's designed, and it also, it looks relatively young. There are clues that the moon is a lot younger than what secular scientists are saying. The moon isn't just some nosy neighbor. Without it, the oceans would become stagnant and filthy. It's giving yuck. Unable to sustain the immense biodiversity they contain. And of course, it provides us with light and helps us keep track of time. The most prominent theory regarding the moon's formation is that approximately four and a half billion years ago, a massive celestial body collided with Earth and the resulting debris gathered together to form the moon. And yet, the Earth and moon interact in such an incredible way that it seems impossible that this would all arise by chance. It's easy to forget that our planet is protected from the rest of the universe by a thin blanket we call the atmosphere. This protective bubble is only about 62 miles thick, but most of it is concentrated within 10 miles of Earth's surface. The atmosphere is made up of 10 different gases. They all have a purpose, but let's look at two of the most important, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Oxygen is essential for life. It allows us to breathe and talk and use fire to our advantage. If there was much less of it, it would literally take our breath away. <gasps> but if it's so important, then why only 21%? Why not shoot for a perfect 100? Well, if there was too much more oxygen, we would be poisoned by the excess. And combustion would occur far more easily. Carbon dioxide is much less prevalent in our atmosphere, but plays a key role nonetheless. It is used by plants during photosynthesis, allowing them to grow. You would think that an increase in carbon dioxide in the air would be a good thing, as plants would flourish. And you would be right. Some creation scientists believe that the world God originally created may have had more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, providing a more temperate worldwide climate than the one we have today. 
Oxygen and carbon dioxide seem to be close to ideal levels, and they, along with the other gases in our atmosphere, provide protection from the dangers of space. It seems that this supernal shield bears the marks of careful design to make Earth habitable. Among the many worlds in the universe, our home is, as far as we know, unique. Evolutionists posit that the Earth, as finely tuned as it is, came about by chance some four and a half billion years ago. Their claim is that the creatures here, humans included, evolved over time to fill our marvelous planet. The book of Genesis, however, tells us that the Earth was created around 6,000 years ago. Our home is not some cosmic coincidence, but was carefully crafted by our creator, just like the countless complex creatures that live here. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. Thanks for watching Creation Connection. New episodes drop weekly on Wednesdays. If you're interested in learning more, you can visit icr.org. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Do it, I dare you. And we'll see you next time on Creation Connection. Peace. Look, it's really simple. This is the earth, and this is the atmosphere. The atmosphere protects the earth, but if you add a little bit of sauce, Mmm, that's right.